So the car's up and running, but obviously because all the airbags have gone off, I'm getting a whole lot of RCM errors, uh, which is restraints control module. After being deployed, they show a different resistance over the contacts to when they're all okay. So I need to emulate the original resistance back to the car so it thinks that all the airbags and seatbelt pretensioners are all okay still. All that's needed is a 2.2 ohm resistor. After replacing all this, it solves all the errors other than one, which is a hard-coded error that's stored in the RCM module, the restraints control module, and needs to be programmed out. I'll tackle this at a later date. The next job I'll tackle would be emulating the front motor. Now most people would think I would use both motors to make a four-wheel drive setup in the Land Rover. The Tesla uses the rear motor to drive the rear wheels and the front motor to drive the front wheels. Why couldn't I do that in the Land Rover? The Tesla has independent front and rear suspension with the drive units in between each driven set of wheels, whereas the Land Rover has solid axles with a prop shaft going from the centre of the vehicle from the transfer case. Now I definitely want to keep the solid axles with the four link core suspension because this is a uh, four wheel drive suspension that is very hard to beat. So the plan is to rotate the rear motor of the Tesla through 90 degrees and instead of driving the left and right rear wheels of the Tesla it will now drive the front and rear prop shafts of the Land Rover. So I won't need to use the front motor but I will need to emulate the signals of the front motor so that the vehicle computer doesn't freak out that it can't see a front motor in the car. This will have to be done through the vehicle's CAN bus network. So the Tesla Model 3 has three main CAN bus networks. There's a vehicle CAN, a chassis CAN and a party CAN. The vehicle CAN bus wires can be accessed with an aftermarket adapter that plugs into the wiring harness at the back of the centre console. The chassis and party CAN buses were a bit trickier to gain access to. I looked through the wiring diagram and decided that I would try to tap into them on the restraints control module which sat in the middle of the car underneath the centre console. Now that I had access to all the CAN buses I could hook up some Arduino Deweys with a CAN bus transceiver to start decoding the signal. Now a very generous individual called Colin Kidder has written some excellent open source software called SavvyCAN which is specifically designed to reverse engineer this sort of CAN bus messages from any car you want really. So after downloading the software and installing the relevant firmware onto the Arduino Deweys, I could hook up the computer to the car and start recording CAN bus logs. Looking at the wiring diagram, I realised that the front drive inverter just used the vehicle and the party CAN buses. So I took some logs with the front drive inverter both plugged in and then unplugged and then used SavvyCAN to compare them and it showed me that there were certain frames missing. So I made up some ESP32 microprocessors with CAN bus transceivers to play these exact frames back to the car. This is the plug that goes to the front inverter down here. So this is all the communications to the front inverter. Um, this is, it has two CAN buses talking to it. Uh, this is the party CAN bus, that's a vehicle CAN bus. Um, there's a high voltage interlock which is just a link through some resistors. And there's a ground, black is the ground, green is um, switched power so when, the, when you turn the car on it sends power to this which starts the logic of the front motor so normally there's no power obviously because it's not using the front motor when you're just sitting in the car so 
these are just two ESP32 um, microprocessors that just send CAN bus data. Uh, so let's see if it works. Switch the car on by activating this handle. Here the contact is clicking. <coughs> there they are. So what I'm doing is I'll put my foot on the brake and um, hopefully it will not trigger errors. As oh yeah, so that noise is the oil pump running. I can unplug that, I forgot to. So if it doesn't get a signal, it'll run at full bore. So that's okay, That's that always comes up because the airbags have gone off and it's stored in the RCM there. So there's no errors so far, so let's put it in reverse, see if it's fine. Yep, all good, let's just reverse a bit, I can't go too far. Yep, no errors. Go drive. All seems to be working. I call that a success. Okay, next test um, is to emulate the power steering because I don't want to put that into the Land Rover. Um, so same thing, I've got some ESP32 CAN bus senders essentially. And I've tapped in, so the power steering has, um, obviously has redundancy, so it has two sets of everything, two sets of power, one big power leads going in there and then two sets of logic there and there so I just got to send signals on the logic to emulate the power steering still there so this is the one of the sides has um, this one is on the party CAN bus the other one's on the chassis CAN bus um, so it's just the CAN bus high and low and a power, so that gets sent, that only gets power when it gets, it's like a wake signal when the car turns on, because you don't need power steering when you're just sitting in the car doing nothing. Um, and the ground goes through there. Uh, and then the other one on the chassis bus, same power and CAN bus. And I've also got the front drive inverter CAN bus signals going. And let's see if the car's happy or not. So, put on brake. How many areas are we going to get? There's that oil pump going at full ball. No bad signals yet. Let's try it. Yeah, that's okay. That'll always happen. Reverse. Still happy. Drive in reverse a bit. Still happy, drive, still happy, park, I'm going to call that a win. Now the anti-lock braking system, this is something I don't really want to use in the Land Rover. I don't have any wheel speed sensors in the Land Rover and they're sort of hard to retrofit. So this is another thing I'm going to have to emulate somehow. So let's unplug it and see what errors I get. Put on the brake, let's see how unhappy it's going to be. Disabled, that's okay. Traction control, that's all okay. I just don't want regen disabled. Yep, it's disabled though. Um, it's all okay, let's see if it'll drive. Autopilot and all that. <laughs> Automatic vehicle hold disabled. Ah. There's someone walking there. I think that, that is a person. <laughs> Interesting, okay. I did right. the same thing for the ABS module as for the power steering and the front drive unit, making up some ESP32s hooked up into the 
CAN buses sending the missing data when it was unplugged but unfortunately I'm still getting errors so I'm going to have to keep working on this one. Okay so moving on to the electronic parking brake. Uh, another thing I don't want to use in the Land Rover is I'm going to have a manual operated parking brake. Um, so it's disabled, adrenaline braking, traction control, stability control, automatic braking, etc. Disabled. It's disabled too. Okay. Um, and it's in the park warning light on and it's in neutral. Let's try putting on the brake see what it does. So I can get into drive. So we're going to reverse. Yep, and for my power. If I press park, it can't go to park obviously. Alright, I need you to do me a favour. Can you keep an eye on that for me while I put the park brake on and see what it rings? Ready? The way the electronic parking brake works in the Tesla is with two DC motors winding a worm drive that pushes the rear brake pads against the disc. It either engages or disengages the rear parking brake motors by um, reversing the polarity of the power to the motors so they'll either turn one way or the other. To determine if the park brake has been set correctly it just measures the current of being applied and at a certain current point it will disengage power to it and assume that the parking brake has been applied. So result of that one, uh, 55 watt halogen, it worked, didn't come up with an area when I put it into drive and it took, I thought it was taking the handbrake off, it needs enough load to sense that it's doing something but obviously when I put it back on it came up with an error because it needs even more load it needs to sense that it's got heaps of load indicating that the park brake is set so that works for going off I need to add another resistor after about a second when it's going on so that's the next step Confirms that's the wrong way around, let's try it the other way. Alright, I've reversed the polarity of the circuit, so let's see what happens. Still not happy. So, first thing will be We'll go in one direction, which we'll just turn one light on. Yep. That's withdrawing the handbrake, and then when the handbrake goes on, the polarity changes. And then the Arduino will power up. Wait for a second and turn the other light on. This test showed me how the inrush current of the halogens was stopping the microprocessor booting up properly, so I added a capacitor to help with this. Okay, another test. I've changed the code on this to take out all the delay because it um, takes a while to boot up, so I think the time it takes to boot up, as soon as it's booted up, turns the relay on. I think that'll be about right, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. All right, no alerts there. Try again. Second time you do it, it seems to get an alert. I do it most of the time. Uh, it's pretty good. Every so often, it's getting an error. I feel like it would make a big difference beefing up 
a lot of these wires. So I think when that comes on, it's there's a big surge of power and it's not helping the microcontroller power up cleanly. I feel like this was a fairly successful test. It was pretty much working. I feel like the both sides have to be pretty much in time with each other, otherwise the car gets a bit upset. It likes to set them so that they're coming on at the exact same time. So I feel like if I have the exact same setup on each side, this would help a lot. So we've made good progress here, I think. Uh, what have we done? We've sorted the front airbag and the seatbelt squibs using uh, some 2.2 ohm resistors. That was a nice, easy one. Um, we've successfully emulated the front motor inverter uh, using CAN bus. Uh, also sorted the front power steering logic with CAN bus. Uh, unfortunately, we failed with the ABS module emulation with the CAN bus. Uh, so we're going to have to revisit that one. Uh, we made good progress with the electronic parking brake. Still more work to be done though.